Christine Greenlee from West Gardner. I'd like to share my personal experiences with you on trade policies that have affected my life. I have held four jobs in my lifetime, uh, but the first three I lost due to foreign imports. A shoe shop that closed in Gardner in 1979 that employed 105 workers. Health tax that closed in Gardner and Brunswick in 1986 that employed little over 400 people, mostly women. And Carlton Woolen Mills in Gardner, which closed in 1998, employing 121. In all three facilities, I did different types of work made good money for that period, but all in the manufacturing sector, which has ha been hit hard by foreign imports. I still would be at any one of them making an honest living had they not closed, because I loved the feeling of producing a product that was sold all over the country. I took great pride in that. We all did, and each of us enjoyed sharing our life with our work family in all three facilities. One of the hardest emotions of all, all of us who, lo who have lost a job is the grief of losing that contact with work families. In my fourth job, I'm employed as a member of a team who delivers information on unemployment insurance, career center services, community resources, and health insurance options. Then if the company becomes trade certified, also presenting all aspects of that program, to our state's laid off workers due to downsizing and closures. A huge number of these dislocations are eligible for the TRA TAA program because the layoff was due to foreign imports. I have some numbers and experiences I thought this group would be interested in. I've been doing this for 17 years now, working with thousands of laid off workers who have lost their jobs and plan to share numbers from the last two years. But first, I'd like to share a couple of facts that I personally can never forget. Sherman Lumber Company, trade certified, closure due to imports. I remember the closure of Sherman Lumber Company in 2002, with 136 employees affected from Sherman, Stacyville, Patton, and the surrounding small little towns. A few of these folks were not able to read and write and most everyone had little or no computer experience or even access to a computer. The reason this one sticks out and always will is that I was told by the union president that a very significant number of these people laid off used their severance pay and cashed in their 401ks to pay off their houses so they wouldn't lose them. Money to enjoy in retirement was no longer an option for them. I remember feeling sad that they had been saving for retirement all their work life and suddenly it was more important not to lose their home. Hathaway Shirt, trade certified, closure due to imports. Hathaway Shirt closed at the end of 2002, leaving 235 employees, 90% women out of work. A fact about this closure that I will never forget, four women died of heart attacks within six months of that closure. Yes, these things matter to the health, overall health of the employees affected. All of this matters to these workers and it matters to me. I have many more, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on to the here and now so that everyone has time to convey their message. Every year we as a team say, maybe this year there won't be as many layoffs and then we're hit with the next big closing. I don't even want to add up the numbers we've seen in the last 17 years. I would be able to, but I don't want to. It's heartbreaking to me. So I only total the count for the year. The last two years began November of 2013. Lincoln Paper and Tissue became Lincoln Pulp and Tissue when they took their paper making machines offline and laid off 186 workers. This was closely followed by the layoff of 256 in February of 2014 with the eventual closure of Great Northern Paper in East Millinocket. October 2014 brought the announcement of the closure of Verso Paper in Bucksport with 578 workers scrambling to figure out 
can I retire now or do I need to find another job after 40 years in the mill? 75% of this workforce <coughs> were 50 and older. 518 males, 58 females. <coughs> End of September 2015 started the announcement of three more major dislocations. Verso, Andrew Scoggin, and Jay announced the layoff of 300 workers at the end of this year. Expira Specialty Solutions in Old Town announced it was closing, laying off 195 workers. They're being paid until the end of December. And Lincoln Pulp and Tissue has closed, displacing another 188 worker, 180 workers. That's 1,695 workers in the last two years just from these mills that I've just mentioned, 1395 of which are within 80 mile radius of, of the th uh, radius of three of the northern mills. All of these sites have now been trade approved, meaning they lost their jobs due to foreign imports. The trickle down effect has begun with layoffs happening in the trucking industry, the woods cutting industry, the mom and pop stores, restaurants, municipal services, etc. These workers have lost good paying jobs and a way of life. Most are lucky to replace these wages at 58 to 64%. Some have been able to replace the entire wage but had to move away or they're driving more than 100 miles to work. This is why, to me, it's unthinkable that our leaders, elected leaders in Congress, continue to stack the deck for multinational corporations at the expense of Maine workers as they pass these unfair free trade agreements. I understand we need trade, I get that, but it needs to be fair trade. This NAFTA trade model encourages companies to outsource jobs so they don't have to follow labor and environmental laws. We need a new trade model that levels the playing field for all American workers. The proposed Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, is a big expansion of this same failed model that destroyed our economy. If the TPP passes, this problem will continue to get worse and will crush any hope for future job growth. I hope our elected officials and you as members of this commission will do everything you can to turn this around and give Mainers a chance again. In closing, I would just like to say I love what I do for work, but I hate that it's necessary. Someday, I'd like to move on to a fifth job in my life, not because I don't love my work, but because I hope someday there won't be any need for me and the team, and there could finally be an end to these layoffs that hurt Maine families. Thank you.